<laughs> Wasn't that a great video? That was so sweet. When Pastor Eric and I were putting this message together a couple weeks back, um, it was one of the things that we just really weren't sure exactly how it was going to pan out. And he always finds these awesome videos to put in front of the message. And so as we were putting and screened this particular video, it was it just screamed at us. It says, oh, this is too cute. We've just got to use this. So as we continue in the, in the series of pastors leading, us in. We're in the Praying Always series, and, and we're looking at simple patterns to apply to our, to our prayer lives, right? And he's used the acrostic acts, um, A-C-T-S, right? And A that we've covered a couple weeks ago is adoration, and then a couple weeks ago he presented uh, confession. Then we took a little time out for Father's Day. We had a nice Father's Day service, didn't we, the other week, right? That was nice, the butterflies and the bacon. Oh, I didn't get any bacon, but a lot of people got bacon, so that was really good for them. And then, of course, we get to um, Thanksgiving and supplication. So today we are talking about Thanksgiving and how we might apply that to our prayer pattern. Now, first, I have a little question for you all, and um, I'm pretty sure I already know a lot of hands are going to shoot up on this, but who has gone on a cruise Anybody been on a cruise before? Yeah, most of us have, right? And, and going on a cruise can be such an exhilarating vacation, dollar value. It's hard to beat it for dollar for dollar value for vacation, places to go, things to see, et cetera, et cetera. But there can be challenges with that and discouragements and things that we don't really see coming until they're in our lap. But when we do that, right, we, we get our tickets and we get on board and we go through the whole process and we get finally into the ship. And we step into the ship and it's palatial, right? It is so pretty, it's so gorgeous, and it just takes our breath away. Well, what do most of us do next? Beeline to the buffet, right? And guilty, right? Because I just know there are two or three dozen shrimp waiting to be in my belly, right? Yeah, absolutely. And that's what a lot of people do. So you end up to go up there and you gorge yourself as though this is the only meal you're going to have for the next week, even though dinner is all but three hours away. But you don't care, you know living carefree now for the moment. But you're going then through the, the, you walk around the ship a little bit, and then it comes to about three or four o'clock, right? And what happens at around three or four o'clock? You hear the big whistle go, mm -mm, and it's time to muster for the emergency drill. Now, once upon a time, we used to have to go to our staterooms and gather these little beauties, right? And we would put these little beauties on, and we would button them up, and of course, emergency drill, you can't use the elevators. So now you got to either go up all the steps or you got to go down all the steps. Then you go out to the promenade deck where everybody's gathering for their emergency drill. Now, while you're out there, all of a sudden, there is no more personal space recognition. You are tight and tight and tight as though, you know, personal space, certainly not COVID, right? Anyway, so we're out there and we're doing this. Now, somebody thinks it's important that we know what these are for. And so they're going to explain to us exactly how we should wear them, how they should be attached. And even though this one isn't an expensive one, the ones you have on the ship have the little light, right? And they also have the little whistle. And then they explain that the light isn't really to attract sharks. And in case the shark misses, you can blow the whistle and say, come on back, you missed me, right? But no, no, no. And so you finish all that and you go back on and then you continue on to your cruise. Now, I have to share with you a little story of mine. It was about my first cruise, and it was very nearly our last cruise because it was a Murphy's Law type of cruise where pretty much everything that could go wrong does go wrong. So first thing we did, made the stupidest mistake. One, we didn't talk and ask anybody about what we should do. And we booked the cheapest little cruise we could get because we thought, well, we just want to try it. You know, just two or three days. What if we don't like going on for a week? You know, what if we don't do it? And so we kind of like went the low road. So we got a cheap little cruise and we drove all the way down to Miami to get on this thing. And then we get there and in Miami in the port, there's all these massive ships, right? And then we find ours and it's like that little or one over there and I want to go in the big ones right but we didn't that was what we booked so we get onto this thing and and we go through the whole process and we get finally get onto the ship and once we get on the ship we it opens up and it's yeah this is pretty nice this could work out and so we we go and we do the mustard drill and everything and we're about to set sail 
And then it becomes Gilligan's Island. The tiny ship was tossed, right? The seas and the weather start changing. And we can see the ocean and it's going like this. And, and, and our little ship is like surrendering already. And it's still tied up to the dock. And we're thinking, oh man, this isn't going to be too good. But we don't care. You know, we're, we're, we'll just muscle through all this. So we do this and then we, we get to the buffet, right? Because oh, I'm going to get it. I'm getting an Easter and they're just waiting for me. And we get there and it's like, hot dogs. Hamburgers, frozen pizza, cold French fries. Really, this is this isn't like the pictures. And so we're disappointed there. And so then we, it's time for us to um, like cruise and go around the ship. We check out our stateroom. Well, our stateroom is a gross exaggeration. We open the door. Oh, I'm not kidding. This gets better and better, folks. And we open the door, and literally our stateroom is about ten by ten. How small was it? It was so small that where the bed was, you couldn't walk up beside the bed. You had to get in and out of the bed over the foot of the bed. Oh, yeah, gets better. You go into the bathroom, right? Using the bathroom, you can literally use the bathroom, brush your teeth, and take a shower at the same time. Tiny, 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 tiny. So we're disappointed. And now we're out on the ocean. You know, that's, since then it's left the dock. And we're in the Straits of Florida, what they call the Straits of Florida as you get down the East Coast. And, and it's bumpy and it's stormy. And you're walking down the hall and the hall's going up and you're walking up and the hall's going down and you're walking down. And then it goes a little this way and a little this way. This is just not pleasant. So we get to dinner and... <laughs> We get to dinner, and dinner is maybe at best like a mediocre high school cafeteria lunch. This is just like, this is just not going our way. So we go, okay, we'll just chill. And so we're going to go now to the entertainment. And, and in the entertainment, it's the headliner act, right? So this has got to be good, right? We've heard so much about the entertainment on these cruises. So we get out there, and it's like the rhinestone cowboy steps out on stage. <laughs> from South America and he's got a sombrero and he's got all these things and the sparkles and stuff and what does he pull out he pulls out a string how about this long and on each end of it is like this little ball and he holds it in the middle and he holds it in front of him and he goes clacky 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 balls going up and down and up and down this is the entertainment oh but he was good at this he was like the clacker meister right he could do it over his shoulder behind his back between his legs he could swing it around like a lasso right he could throw it over his shoulder like a no something else. but he so he could do all these amazing things with this but i'm looking at my wife and go seriously so we go okay this is just a bad day tomorrow we're going to be in port maybe tomorrow will be a better day so we get to tomorrow and we get back into our room right now if motion sickness doesn't capture you, when you're bumping around in a seas like a can, like beans in a can, it can be very relaxing. You can go to sleep and sleep like a baby in a cradle. And that's what happened to us that night. But all of a sudden, at about 4 o'clock in the morning, bam, 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 wakes up, right? Bam, bam, bam. We wake up. We spring over the foot of our bed. And... And, our, and, our, and our, our stateroom is filled with smoke. And it's like, whoa, wow. And bam, 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 you got to get out. So we throw on our bathrobes and they usher us out to the side of the boat. And we're looking down the promenade. And what are we seeing? Everybody out there with their life preservers on and their jackets on. These people paid attention. And they have their, <laughs> and they have their medications and their toiletries in hand. And, and we're just thinking, maybe we should have paid more attention to that. A little fluffy, right? And so, soon enough, what ended up happening was there was a fire in one of the kitchens. And that triggered the alarms. And smoke drifted down through the ventilation system. And that's what triggered everything. So, of course, we were last to show up to the party. And so, by about the time we were there, they said, okay, everything's under control. You can all return to your staterooms. Well, of course, now by this time, everybody's like wide awake. You think we're going to go into the drink, you know, think who knows what's happening next. And so they get dismissed. Now everybody's wide awake. Everybody's in the ship is wide awake. And they say, okay, go back. So we go, we want coffee. Not a drop of coffee to be had in the whole ship. 
could have been a mutiny going on that night. I'm telling you what. But in any case, that was, that was our first experience and nearly our last. And we ended up being convinced by some friends of ours, look, that was just awful. You know, next time, step up to the plate. If you're going to go on a cruise, go on a cruise. Take a week. Go in the super liners. It's altogether different. And we followed his advice. And we've been cruising once or twice a year ever since. And I've never had any such experience again. So the question I have for you this morning is, do you sometimes, struggle with disappointments and discouragement. We all do, and sometimes we can drown in discouragements and disappointments. Sometimes it can just take us so far off of our game that it's just a shame. And it can be from any number of things, right? It could be from relationships. It could be our spouse. It could be our kids. It could be our job. It can be our cars. It can be our health. It could be your neighbors. It can be any number of things. But why? Why do we struggle so? Oftentimes, it's because we're out of alignment, right? Use your car, for example. Remember this? See the USA in your Chevrolet. Nothing. You get it. Somebody get it. Yeah, right. That was an old jingle. It was an advertising campaign from once upon forever ago. Uh, it's things that just stick. Other things, I can't remember a person's name, but I can remember the jingle of a Chevrolet commercial. Uh, but in any case, so... Use your car for an example, right? When it's in alignment, it drives nice. It's smooth sailing. It's fun. It's enjoyable, as long as maybe Eric's not in front of you or behind you. And so you're enjoying yourself, and you're out there. But what happens when your car's not in alignment, right? Your wheels are shaking, and your steering wheel's shaking, right? And it's not fun at all, and it causes anxiety and discouragement and disappointment because, oh, my gosh, how much is this going to cost? Is this going to break? Am I going to have to call somebody? Am I going to be broken down out here in the middle of nowhere? Well, likewise, spiritually, when we are out of alignment, we face disappointments, right? And discouragements. And why? Because we take so many things for granted. We become not thankful for so many of the blessings that we're so, so, so given, so handed to us. And the truth is, we are all guilty of taking things for granted, our blessings for granted. Use our bodies, for example, right? And, and I can see in this, too, like there's many of us in about in the same season of life here. When we were young, right, we just took for granted all the millions of things that go on in our bodies, 24-7, 365, that we just don't think about. It's not that we're malicious and just blatantly taking them for advantage, like, you know, like, oh, well, we don't need sleep, and we can eat what we want, and we can drink this, and we can do that, and we can do that. No, 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 I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about things like our hearing. We don't miss our hearing until it fades. We don't miss our vision until we need glasses to see, and even then you kind of... Which way that's going? Oh, wrong pair. You know, things like that, right? Same thing with, with, with our sense of smell, the, the, the beautiful fragrances that we get to smell and, and our taste, right? Depends what, what's going on in our lives. Maybe medications or something. We lose our sense of taste, and that's awful. Maybe it's our knees. Maybe it's our backs. Maybe it's our kidneys. There are any number of things that we take for granted until they malfunction or they're not there to, to, to be what we just take for granted. So let's look at three things to be thankful for. Number one, what has God done in the past? We read from First Chronicles chapter 16. Remember, it's going to be test on this. Pastor said verses 7 through 16, where David's glorious psalm of thanksgiving provides us a blueprint of thankfulness. That day, David first appointed Asaph and his associates to give praise to the Lord in this manner. Give praise to the Lord, proclaim his name, make known among the nations what he has done. Sing to him, sing praise to him, tell of all his wonderful acts, glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord and his strength, seek his face always. Remember the wonders he has done, his miracles, and the judgments he pronounced. You, his servants, the descendants of Israel, his chosen ones, the children of Jacob. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He remembers his covenant forever, the promise he made for a thousand generations, the covenant he made with Abraham, the oath he swore to Isaac. 
So we might ask, what's the celebration about? What's going on? What's the backstory here? Well, during the period of the judges, the ark had been captured. The Ark of the Covenant had been captured by those pesky Philistines. And what happened in that time was that Israel and the Philistines are always fighting, right? They're always warring with each other. We win, they win, they just battle back and forth. Well, in this case, Israel had suffered a pretty substantial loss. So some brainiac thought, oh, I got a great idea. Why don't we go tote the Ark into the next battle? And we know God is going to just step up to the plate and rescue us. Well, apparently they didn't consult God first. God had no part of it. So the next time they went into battle, they towed the ark up. The Philistines soundly stomp them. I mean, devastate them, capture the ark, and take the ark back to Philistine land. Right? So now they have this thing in Philistine land. And here's a lesson to learn. Careful what you wish for. You just might get it. And when you pray, be specific or you end up with me. So when you pray, it's as important. It is important, right? So here the Philistines have the ark. And it's, this is reminiscent now of what was going on in Egypt when God was like putting the plagues out, right? On, on the Egyptians trying to get his people to get set free. But the Philistines have no part of it. So they're passing this thing around like a hot potato from one Philistine city to the other. And they're getting boils and they're getting this and that. And they're being inspired not to sit down. And there's just all kinds of not good things happen to them. So they decide they're going to put this up in, in their temple with their other idols, because that, maybe that's where it would be happy. Well, God would have no part of that. So then overnight, night, God knocks down all the other idols, right? And these guys come in, and they go, whoa, right? So what are we going to do with this now? And somebody smart goes, how about if we give it back? Let's give it back to them. So, so they put it, yeah, right, they do, right? Read it, it's in the Bible. And so, so they put it on a cart with a couple dairy cows, and they, like, push it, and they go off back to Israel, and, and they ended up wanders into Israel, and it ends up in Abinadad's house, and so don't know why it doesn't end up going further, but apparently that was God's will, so it sits there for like 40 years, and during that time, Saul has been king, and of course, King Saul, he's a train wreck, right? He's not about this, but then comes David, and David becomes king. And David has a heart for God. And David says, whoa, we got to get that back here, right? We got to get the ark. We got to get it in Jerusalem. We got to get into alignment to God's will. So they're all happy. And they send a team out to go get the, and then so they, they put it on a, on, on a cart and they have a couple of oxen. And they're bringing it back. And then, of course, many of us know the story, right? Because this is like a woe story. And so the, the, the ox maybe trip up a little bit. And the cart wiggles a little bit. And it looks like the ark is going to fall off. And poor Uzzah, he just got, he's just there. And he's like probably reflexing. He goes, no, we can't do that. And God strikes him dead for doing that. And David's like, whoa. How about if we stash this over in Obed's house for a while? So they stash it over in Obed's house for a while, and, and they go off and they fight some Philistines again. But in the meantime, they're getting into alignment, and they remember God's will on how the ark is to be carried on poles and organized and, and conducted by Levites. So David gets this orchestrated, and now... With great thankfulness for all that's happened in the past and what's going on in their lives right then and what their expectations, or expectations are for in the future, they bring the ark into Jerusalem. So that is what's going on. So how might we reflect on how God has blessed us in the past and what we should be thankful for? Of course, there's many things isn't there? We all have things from last week, last month, last year, 10 years, whatever. We could go back into the Bible all the way back to creation. I'm pretty thankful for creation. I'm very happy we exist. And on top of that, in all of this magnificent creation that God made, he made us in his image. That's something to be thankful for, my friends. His image. Hmm. Now, we can bunny hop forward, right? And we can be so thankful for Jesus and his work on the cross for us. We can be thankful for his resurrection, the empty tomb. We can be thankful for Pentecost and the Holy Spirit that comes to live with us. I like what Rick Warren has to say. Happy moments, praise God. Difficult moments, seek God. Quiet moments, worship God. Painful moments, trust God. Every moment, thank God. Those are words, friends. Number two, what he is doing today. My goodness, where do we start here, right? The Lord provides for us. He protects us. He, he provides our needs. He comforts us. And every day, 
He is pressing each and one of us into the very specific mold that he designed for us. Every day he's pressing us into this mold. And that mold is to form us into the likeness of Jesus Christ. That's something to be thankful for, my friends. Let's look at this next verse. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all peoples. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. You know, as God's people, we have a responsibility not only to be thankful for him, but to be thankful for all that he enables us to do in his place, right? There's a story I, I heard, and I got to make this really fast. Y'all need to listen quicker because we're already about out of time, and I've got another point to make. So I'm going to make this a really fast story. So I was reading in the, in the news about, about two weeks ago, right? This guy, scuba diver, he's in uh, Cape Cod. He's in Cape Cod, right? And he's underwater, and he's picking up lobsters off the bottom. And all of a sudden, whoosh, whoosh total darkness. And he thinks, oh my goodness, I've been eaten by a shark. But he doesn't feel any pain. And he doesn't feel any like big gnarly teeth or anything. And he's wondering what's going on. And it dawns on him, he has been swallowed by a whale. It's in the news, folks. And, and I immediately go to finding Nemo, right? And, and Marlin and Dory just swimming around in this whale's mouth thinking, how are we getting out of here, right? And so he's fighting and struggling, and he hasn't lost his regulator, so he's still breathing in there, and he thinks for sure he's going to die. He thinks the next thing, because he can feel like the whale, like, like trying to swallow him. Like, and so he fights against it, and then all of a sudden, he feels the whale going up, and he sees daylight, and the whale shakes his head, and... Spits him out. Spits him out like old nasty bubble gum, right? And, and his buddy on the boat picks him up, and they're like, whoa, that was pretty awesome. You can bet that fella thought Lord was with him that day. He was pretty thankful for what he had done that day. So, um, so we should be thankful for things like that. Okay, point number three, and I got to go into fast forward. Looking forward to what God will do. Oh, my goodness. Is there anything more inspiring than the hope we have in Christ and the expectation. And I don't mean hope like, gee, I hope we have shrimp on the buffet. No, 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 no. I'm talking about our expectation, God's promises in the word of that we are going to be spending eternity with him in heaven where there is no pain, there is no discouragement, there is no point. You know, everything is just going to be unimaginably awesome. And that's the expectations that we have moving forward. And for that, we should be thankful because those people who have not received Christ as their Savior do not have that expectation or that hope. And friends, we should be thankful for that every single day. So with that, friends, I'm going to um, close in prayer because I've run out of time. Y'all really need to listen quicker. So, um, uh, so if you join me in prayer, Lord, thank you for this opportunity to serve you. Thank you for each and every person that's watching at home, for every single person that here is with us today. Lord, I just pray that you will inspire us to be thankful for the things of the past that you have done for us, the things that you do for us today, and the things we look forward to in the future in being with you. And Lord, we are just so thankful for your love and your mercy and your grace, which is everlasting to everlasting. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you. David.
last line one more time. Are we back on? There we are. Now we're back on. Great. Awesome. Thank you, David. And thank you, Praise Team. What you do every week is really remarkable. Listen, I want to thank everybody for coming here today. I want to thank you folks at home for tuning in and staying tuned in to me. At least I hope so. And so I would just like to um, um, remind everybody that we don't pass the um, offering baskets around just yet, but there are baskets up front that if you would be so moved to, um, to donate today on your way out, we certainly appreciate that. That. And I would just like to close in prayer now. Lord, thank you for the opportunity to come together and worship you in this place with these people, such fine brothers and sisters we have in, in you, Lord. And we so appreciate all of them. And Lord, I just pray that as we move forward, that you will inspire us to pray in a way of adoration and to confess and lay our sins and our, our misgivings at your feet. And to be thankful for all the things that you give us. And to remind us to pray not only for others, but for all people. No matter who they are, no matter where they are. Lord, please protect Pastor Eric and bring him back to us safely. We so look forward to him and the works that you do through him. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Thank you. <laughs>